Hey everyone, Jefferson Graham here, photo walking New York City with the one and only Scott Kelby. Scott Kelby is the most prolific Photoshop, he's the most prolific author about photography books. He's the king of Photoshop. You all know him from Kelby One, uh, the instructor that has been going all over the place for the past several years. And New York City is one of them, right? Yeah, it's awesome. It's where my family's from. I was born in Florida, but my family's from New York. So I kind of grew up going to New York at a very early age and fell in love with it. It's loved it ever since. It's still awesome. And I grew up in New York City, the greatest city in the world. Uh, but Scott has a class, the Photographer's Guide to New York City. It's one of several classes he has, travel photography classes, New York City and Chicago. And I think there's Venice and Rome and London, right? Yeah, yeah. But all let's, of those and more. Yeah, let's. <laughs> uh, oh, and if you're not a Kelby One member, it's ten dollars. It starts at ten dollars a month. I'll do the plug for you, right? Or you're you could see kind. his. New, you could see his New Year class for twenty nine dollars and unlock it. But let's start with talking, Scott. Talk about New York and what makes it such a great place to photograph. Well, it's 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 a place that has everything. It has architecture. It has modern architecture. It has old architecture. It has different looks in different parts of the city. It's got interesting people. It's got great food when you're between shoots. It's got a lot of, there's a lot to it. It's got water, right? It's got water inside and out. You know, it's got great fountains. It's got wonderful, it's the fact that it's on the water. Uh, and what's interesting is shooting inside New York and Manhattan is very fun. But shooting Manhattan from across the river is fun. There's just so many shooting opportunities. It's, it's crazy. So what I did was, you know, I have that long list that you mentioned, but I put together my, if I only could go to 10, what would they be? And that's, I put a list together for you. So mm -hmm. that's that I've got my top 10 places. Like I've got one day. Now I will tell you this, the 21 locations that I shot, I did them all within 24 hours. I did it on, I, I got there on a Friday. I shot a uh, Friday night, Saturday morning, and I left that afternoon, that same afternoon. And I shot all 21 locations. So uh, that's easy to that's pretty amazing. Uh, well, there's a great thing about New York is it's so walkable and you can get everywhere. Uh, you know, I grew up on 86th street and I would just walk down to the East village all the time. And that could be an hour. If, if you kept on walking, I mean, I kept stopping, but you could do the entire city in an hour, really, but you're not going to because you're going to stop over and over again. But Scott, tell everybody about your top 10. Let's let's jump in. All right. Number one, and this is one that I, I found during through research, and it, it just absolutely blew me away. It's a cathedral. Now, when you think of cathedrals in New York, you think of St. Patrick's Cathedral. It's nice. But it's not like St. John the Divine. It's at uh, it's on Amsterdam Avenue at 112th Street. I, it looks like they went to France, grabbed a cathedral, and dropped it in New York City. And and it's it's not like St. Patrick's Cathedral is full all the time. This one, you'll be by yourself. There's nobody but there but you and a tripod. It is just one of the most amazing cathedrals. And I've been in, in cathedrals. I'm, I love classic interiors. So if it's an opera house or an old theater or cathedral, I go to it. And if you're going to New York and you're going to shoot there, Columbia University, right around the corner, right? Right around the corner. Yeah. yeah. On Broadway. Great. Okay. So what's number two? <laughs> what's number two? Number two is the Morgan Library. So this is JP Morgan's office and his personal library that he gave as kind of a gift to the city of New York. And it is, it's stunning. It's like, it's like a two or three story private library. So it's, it's rather small. Well, I mean, by rather small, it's probably a hundred by a hundred. It's not, you know, but if you compare it to like the New York public library, which is giant, you could fit it in there 15 times. But it is so beautiful and so old worldy. And is and there's three parts to this. First, there is the museum. And to be honest with you, I haven't been in the museum part. I really wanted to see the library. So I went there and went especially to the library. I've been there twice. Um, and the library itself is just so unique and so beautiful and so interesting and so well kept. Then there is a little, I would call it a foyer with a bunch of statues that's really neat. And then his office, his office is all done in like red velvet. It's really, really neat. And then he has a secret room with more books. It's just, if you haven't seen it before, it's just a joy to be in there. It's just, 
one of those places where you could just go and just, it's just so overwhelmingly pretty, very different, like from St. John the Divines. St. John the Divines is big and gothic and amazing. And the, this is now intimate and cute, but it's got that same old world feel. And it's really very, very neat and red. It's as red as anything you've ever shot, Jefferson. It's red. You might even have to back off your vibrance and post-processing. Okay. And what's number three? Where are we going next? Number three, it's going to sound kind of cliche, but I'm telling you what, it's better than it sounds, the top of the rock. So it is the observation center on the top of Rockefeller Center, right? So 30 Rock, where NBC's headquarters are. There is a, um, you take an elevator to the top and you do have to pay. They do charge you, but it's, it's a very nice presentation. It's worth seeing. But when you get up there, you have great unobstructed views of the Empire State Building, for example. So what happens is people think, I want to get classic New York. So they go up the Empire State Building and then you're missing the classic view. The classic view of New York is to have the Empire State Building and the Chrysler Building or both of those in your shot. When you go to the top of the Empire State Building, you're not going to have the most iconic building in New York in your shot. So when you shoot from the top of the rock, you are looking right at it. And, and it's a beautiful view down Manhattan. Well, let's talk about the statue for a second, because if you go there, you take a boat, you have, probably have to take a tour, uh, yeah, because the Staten Island Ferry does not stop there. So you have to take a tour. And then you're, you're looking up at this giant thing where, I mean, you know, it's a little hard from down on the ground to really capture it. You don't, it's again, it's like being on the Empire State Building. You can't shoot the Empire State Building if you're on it. So what I wanted to do was to get the circle line. But like I said, we had one day there and, and, and we did not get it done. Uh, number four on the list is a, the complete opposite, super ultra modern architecture, the Oculus. So the Oculus is at uh, where the World Trade Center was. So it is the One Liberty Plaza, I think it's called, or yeah. One World Trade Center. It is where the new World Trade Center is, so it's easy to find. And it is a, it's a subway station. It's a very amazing subway station. The architecture is ultra modern. It looks like something out of a movie. And it's all white. It's pure white. The floor, the roof, the, and it's just really, really just incredible inside and out. So you can go in there. You don't have to go get on the subway. You can go into the station because there's shopping and there's like a mall. I mean, it's like quite, quite, a, quite a thing, uh, but it's really, really unique and really interesting and beautiful. And you can take all kinds of shots inside and juxtaposing this new modern crazy thing on the inside with the older buildings and the outside is really a very neat, slick thing. So the Oculus, that's my number four and a really, really cool shot. Okay, and, I th and, and now we're going to number five. Number five. Number five is actually, it's at a, at a place called Tudor City. So it's Tudor City. If you just look on the map for Tudor City, it is a just a couple of small condos and you're shooting down 42nd Street. So you're up on an overpass. You're shooting on an overpass. The street runs below you. So you're up top, street runs under you, and you're shooting straight down 42nd Street. It is a, I will tell you, it's a classic Instagram shot. So for Instagrammers, you will not be alone there. There will be other people shooting alone. Now, I went there at dawn, and that does help because there won't be as many people at dawn, of course. But once the sun comes up and, and the, the light's awful, then everyone shows up. <laughs> so get there early. It's just a really unique shot. It's kind of moody and kind of old New York-y, and it's just very interesting. Okay. Now, do you make it up to Times Square? It's not on, Times Square is not on this list today, right? It is not. Uh, Times Square is, I think, is, is, is too obvious. <laughs> you're going to shoot Times Square. You're going to walk through it 10 times. So you're going to, you're going to want to shoot it. And it's, it is a, a, an interesting shoot, but if someone was going and they only had a few days, I'd like, yeah, snap Times Square when you go through, but that's not going to be something that you frame and put on your wall. Yeah. Never. You know, it's never. not going to be like, Ooh, number six is also very close to all of this. It is the Pershing Square coffee shop at Grand Central Terminal. There is um, the Pershing Square coffee shop and there is an overpass that runs over it. So the coffee shop is under the overpass, right, at Grand Central. And it's just the cutest, iconic little place. And it's been photographed quite a bit. Uh, the thing that you have to, the, the skill that you have to have there, Jefferson, is patience. 
Now there is a, a traffic light and it stops the cars. So you'll have an opportunity to shoot without cars in front of you. But there, it's a very, it's Grand Central Terminal. <laughs> it's very popular. So I just kind of had to sit there and wait until I got you know my shot with nobody in it. And what I remind people is you don't need it without people for three minutes. You need it without people for one five hundredth of a second. You just need it for a split second. You don't need it free for minutes. You just get your camera set up. I used to plot a pot again, get it set up and just wait, just stand there and wait. And then when all of a sudden there's nobody there, click and you're done. You, you don't need 30 shots of it. You need one. Uh, number seven. So when you're at Rockefeller Center, if you go down to the bottom and facing, literally facing a St. Patrick's Cathedral is this, um, this uh, gold statue of Atlas. And it, because of the way, if you've got like a wide angle lens or an iPhone and you can use the, the iPhones uh, ultra wide. So the 0.5 would be their setting on your iPhone. You get this incredible wide angle shot with Atlas and then these beautiful buildings. And it's really just a very interesting. And it's right there at the same address, 30 Rockefeller Center. Uh, right there so you're getting two shots in literally in the same place so for my day picture this I, I did rockefeller center up top i came down and got an entirely different shot from the ground from atlas i walk literally across the street and i'm in saint patrick's cathedral so there's a lot of shooting right i mean you're getting three big things that are really cool kind of iconic new york stuff right there within you know 50 feet of each other. So it's, that's, that's or tw also tw uh, 20 blocks, 20 blocks. You go from Times Square to the New York public library to Rockefeller center. That's 10 blocks. Just, just that yeah. alone. Number eight is one that you mentioned in your opening comments. Of, of course you mentioned a number of these, which is it's a shot of the Manhattan bridge. People always think it is the Brooklyn bridge you're photographing, but it is not. You're actually photographing the Manhattan bridge and you're going to Brooklyn Bridge Park in Dumbo. So it is across the river from Manhattan. So you have the bridge in Manhattan in the background. It's a public park. It's wide open. It's beautiful. It's lovely. There's really nice homes there. It's like a nice feel, safe feeling area. And you've got these wonderful views. But what kind of makes it is the bridge leads your eye, like the viewer's eye, right into the city. And it's a really neat composition. And it's, again, we're not breaking any new ground here. It's not like this has never been done, but it's a very popular shot for a cool reason. It's, it's, it's a really neat view. When you're in that same area, right, the Dumbo Park, walk down to Pier 1. It's called Pier 1 Palisade. And there are these pylons in the water and you're seeing the tip of Manhattan. So down towards Wall Street and that area. And you have these pylons in the water. So what you do is a long exposure. So you try to keep, you have to be on like a tripod or you're going to keep your shutter open. So the water is going to move, but of course the pylons don't. And what you get is this smooth, silky water and then the city in the background. It really makes for a very, very compelling picture. And again, this is you're walking down from where you were. You were shooting that Manhattan Bridge in Dumbo. Just keep walking from Pier 6 down to Pier 1. So it's Pier 1 Palisade. It's the pylons, and it's a very, very famous shot. And now we're to number 10. These are in no particular order, but I would say this is my last choice. <laughs> I would say if I had to put them in order, this would be number 10, which is to actually shoot on the Brooklyn Bridge itself. Don't shoot the bridge. There's nothing wrong with shooting the bridge, but actually go up onto the bridge. And there are a lot of neat shots and things that you can do with the cables from the bridge. Really, really cool. A lot of people riding bikes and fun stuff and just great people. Top 10 New York. Tell everybody before we go, Kelby won. Really interesting. A few years ago, you had this idea. We're going to do online training and we're going to put it on the web and you won't have to go. You won't have to leave your house. You'll just watch everything on the computer. You were ahead of your time. Uh, we were, uh, but so now, yeah, we have over 800 full length classes now. We have 800. It's like a huge library of classes. And um, yeah, I've got where to shoot in Chicago. Where to, and I also have classes just on travel photography. So I did a class in Paris on how to shoot travel. And uh, I've done a class in Venice on how to capture the essence of a city. And so I've, we have a lot of classes on travel and on drone photography and things like that. Or we're, I'm really big on travel. I love to travel. You know what I love about it? Somebody asked me this in an interview. They said, so what is your favorite 
uh, genre of photography because I shoot, you know, portraits and I shoot sports and I shoot travel and a landscape and they're like, it has to be because you're already taking something that I love very dearly, which is traveling. I love of the travel. I like being on an airplane. I like going places. I do a lot of travel with my family. Meanwhile, Kelby One uh, starts at $9.99 a month for 800 classes from the master, Scott Kelby. And, and you can find many, many other, a hundred other photographers. But you can find Scott online at scottkelby.com and Twitter and LinkedIn and Facebook, basically at Scott Kelby, right? Yeah, that's it. Okay, I'm at Jefferson Graham on Twitter. Thank you, Scott. You put me in a New York state of mind. (laughs) You know it. All right. Oh, yeah. Nice, nice, perfect way to end the show. Perfect.